Two years ago, I received a knock at the door really late at night. My ex-boyfriend was standing there and asked to come in. And honestly, I thought we would probably just argue and that would be it. But I let him in. He had never shown really any signs of aggression. There were no signs that I should be concerned or worried. But I was surprised. <laughs> I walked out of the kitchen and from out of nowhere he attacked me and began beating me. And I tried to fight and I tried to scream and the more that I fought, the more he did too. I kicked walls, I kicked doors. I just wanted somebody to call the police, anybody. And nobody bothered to. I mean, this went on for what seemed like an eternity and nobody bothered to call the police. He kept hitting me and telling me that he was going to kill me and then kill himself and that we would die together. And I was scared, but I didn't really think he'd follow through with it until he had his hands over my mouth and my throat and and I realized that he was wearing gloves that he had thought about this that he had planned it and that he had actually acted on it and I thought I was gonna die I was gonna die right there my daughter was gonna come home and she was gonna find me Well, obviously, thankfully, he didn't, but um, I was so traumatized by the whole thing. I left Kansas City, I drove to St. Louis, and showed up at my brother's doorstep. <laughs> and I called my daughter to tell her what happened. We immediately drove back to Kansas City so I could file a police report and gather a few things, but I literally left everything I owned behind. I left my friends behind. It was my daughter's senior year of high school and she had to move. It literally changed everything. And now I look at it and think it was for the best in many respects. Because, you know, it really put me on the path where I think I'm supposed to be going. But at the time, it was devastating to leave everything that I knew behind. I'd lived in Kansas City my entire life. I never wanted to leave. So it was a big change. Well, not long after that, um, Gary and I were getting ready to come to LA for a film festival. and. My ex-boyfriend had posted a really cryptic message on Facebook and I was paranoid. I w I'd been paranoid. I couldn't leave the house. I didn't want to be alone. I slept with the lights on. I had to know where everybody was at every single moment. And when I came back to Kansas City, I, I had to be with somebody all the time. I was mortified. I could not get the images out of my head. Every time I would sleep, I would dream about it. And every time I'd hear a sound, it would remind me of it. And I couldn't get past it. So when I read this message, I wondered, was he on his way to St. Louis? Was he going to LA? What was going on? Where was he? And so I started making all these frantic phone calls to my friends to see what was going on, only to find out that he had taken a bunch of pills and I guess was trying to commit suicide. So there's this part of me that's always wondered, you know, if I hadn't made that, I, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself though. So I went to Gary and I said, I really, I want to make this film. And he didn't really understand why? He, he didn't question it. 
he said whatever I wanted to do. And I wanted to recreate it so that I could replace the horrifying images that I had in my head of reality with something that happened in a safe environment, you know, on a film, so that when I would recall that, I could think of it in the film sense versus having to deal with the reality of it. And people said I shouldn't do it, and people said that if I was going to do it, I shouldn't be the one to play the character, that I should direct it. But I knew that nobody was going to be able to play it but me the way that I wanted it done. Because we filmed it in Kansas City, I knew, you know, the film community knew the story. They knew everything. And so I knew it was going to be a little difficult to find somebody to play the part of him. But Jeff Staub stepped up to the plate and did a fantastic job knowing full well what he was stepping into and how fragile my emotions were and that he was effectively going to beat the crap out of me. <laughs> but he did a great job and Gary did a great job and everybody that helped out was fantastic. But ultimately we made the film I had a huge emotional release, and those that worked on the film know poor John, our sound guy, was stuck in the bathtub as I'm bawling my eyes out, letting it out. But anyway, um, the film turned out okay, and I want people to watch it. It's not my normal inspirational happy film with a uh, great message. But it's one that I needed to do emotionally to get it out of my system. And I thank everybody that worked on it. Because without you guys, I couldn't have done it. And I'm in a much better place emotionally because of it. But when you do watch it, please don't watch it at work. Don't watch it around small children. And if you take anything away from it, if you know somebody, that's in an abusive relationship, or you hear somebody trying to get help, please do. There is help out there, and you do need to get out. I spent many years in an, in an abusive marriage, so I've been there, and I've been through it. But the stuff that happened with this came out of the blue. Anyway. I hope you watch it, I hope you share it, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much.